Morning and get into our teaching. Welcome to another teaching from FM International Ministries. We hope this teaching will bless you in some way or other. Um, and that's what this is all about is we're here to put some things out there to guide you into the study on your own. And we encourage you to take what we teach and go in and test it for yourself. Study it. Study it out and learn Learn what the Lord has for you because he's going to show you things in there. So that's what we're here to do. We're not here trying to control you or go, you know, send you off in one direction or another. We're just putting the information out there and hoping it blesses you and gives you, giving you a guidance in where to look and start because eventually you will be doing it on your own once you learn these things. So let's lift up our voice and praise the Lord and, and ask him to bless us as we go through this teaching today. Father, we thank you. We praise your name for this Shabbat. We ask you to guide our hearts and direct us in the direction you want us to go to continue to build upon your kingdom here on this earth so that one day we will be with you in your kingdom in eternity. We thank you and we praise your name for this opportunity. And Satan, I take authority over you. I bind you and all your powers of darkness from this internet, from this teachings, from the electronics that we use to put this information out there. We bind you from every aspect of it. In Yeshua's holy name, you're bound. I loose the power of the Rokhokadesh to guide our hearts with that wisdom and that truth. And I loose those mighty angels standing around around our homes that we will be saved from the darkness, evil, illness, and disease that is in this world today, that which is to come. And everybody can say amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Um, we're going to continue on now and maybe wrap this thing up today on, on teaching on preparation. And it's something that, especially in these days that we're in now, this day and this hour, <laughs> we need to be truly looking ahead and, and seeing what it's going to take to get through all of this, not only in the physical realm, but also in the spiritual realm. We're going into some dangerous times, as it's spoken of in Scripture. It's going to be dangerous times. And where, how we prepare, what we prepare, not only for ourselves, but for our families and those coming after us. So let's get started today. We, uh, we left off, we were going through some of the uh, Tanakh, if you will, the Torah and the readings of the, of the uh, prophets and some examples and, and our forefathers, what they went through to prepare for some things that they were doing for the Lord and, and how important it was that they, we do these things right. You know, we look ahead, we make, try to make the best choices we can with what we've been given. And so today we're going to start out in uh, Matthew 25. We're going to read 1 through 13. We're going to see what Yeshua had to teach us in some of these instances and, and how we should get ready and what, what to look for. Matthew 25, 1, if you found that. And again, please, um, we need to understand we are in trying times and moving into some times when we definitely need to learn how to prepare for what is coming. Matthew 25, 1, if you found that. The kingdom of heaven at that time will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish one took lamps with them, but no oil. Go figure. Didn't look like, doesn't look like they looked ahead very far, did they? No, they just grabbed it and ran out the door. Whereas the others took flasks of oil with their lamps. Okay, so they, they, they kind of looked ahead a little bit. And this is an example of something we need to look at whenever we are getting ready for something that we're going to do, you know, uh, an event or, or whatever's going to take place. You know, we need to prepare for whatever may happen or whatever will maybe not happen, you know, in the plan. You know, will that plan be changed? What if it does? Uh oh what if this happens? What if, look for, you know, ways that you can be prepared for those things. Let's go on, 25.5 of Matthew. Now the bridegroom was late, so they all went to sleep. Now this is one to really think about. The bridegroom being Yeshua, he's tarrying, isn't he? He's, he's not here yet. We know he's coming, but we don't know when. So, we need to be prepared. We can't be falling asleep on the job, okay, so to speak. We're going to have to prepare. What are we going to have to do to prepare for his return? We're going to talk about some of these things. 
25 6. It was the middle of the night when the cry rang out. The bridegroom is here. Go out to meet him. The girls all woke up and prepared their lamps for lighting. The foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. <laughs> Go figure, huh? They forgot to bring some. They had a little bit in the lamp and it was not going to last. Sounds like someone came unprepared, didn't they? In case the time got delayed. They probably had enough to walk over there and sit down and the evening came and they lit them up and, uh-oh, running out of oil already. We didn't have enough to last into the night. When you are not prepared for a setback or unexpected, become desperate, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to get yourself in trouble in that fashion too because then you start doing and saying things you probably really don't mean. It's like, hey, give us some of your oil, you know. Well, you should have brought some of your own. If we give you some, yeah, we'll go on. We're going to read into this. And, and 25.9. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both you and us. Go to the oil dealers and buy some for yourselves. But as they were going off to buy, the bridegroom came. Uh-oh. Those who were ready went with them and to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came. Sir, sir, they cried out, let us in. But he answered, indeed, I tell you, I don't know you. So stay alert, because you know neither the day nor the hour. And that's what we're talking about. Everybody knows Yeshua is going to return if you believe in him and who he was. This was basically a, the story about, hey, don't be falling asleep. I'm coming back someday, you know. And that's the way we need to be prepared. Also, we don't know. So we have to live every day being in the mode of getting ready for his return, spiritually, spiritually, but physically also for the things that are coming, okay? See, now we're going to look at some examples of situations that are going to be pertinent in our lives. You know, that verse 13 there, it, it, it really sums up well uh, what's going on, watching out, being prepared for what is to come. And, and if we're not, you know, like I say, the ladies, they, they, they didn't have enough oil, so they missed out. You know, they had to go get some, so they didn't know if he was going to be there yet for the loss. They hurried up so they could have some lamps. Okay, well, in the meantime, he comes, shuts the door, and they come in. And, well, I don't know you. You know, where'd you come from? You know, my friends are all here. <laughs> uh, what a deal. We don't want to get in that fashion with the Lord now, do we? No. We're going to go to Matthew 26 next, okay? And here we find Yeshua preparing himself for what he's about to go through. You know, he went through, well, we know the story, and uh, yeah, what he had to go through, most of us. Could we? I don't know. We don't know that unless we're ever put in that position. But we pray that we never have to go through the pain and the suffering that he had to for us. And he did it for us. But we need to be prepared for that time if it does come. Because there will be persecution. When you read through the scriptures, he tells us very clearly that those that follow him, that believe who he is and follow his word and live his word, are going to get persecuted. That's all there is to it. We're going to be on the face of this earth going through the going throughs. Get ready. It's not going to be an easy road to hope. But have faith. He'll take care of you in that time. Matthew 26, if you found that. Yeah. But see, Yeshua was still in the flesh too, wasn't he, when he was in there praying. Matthew 26, 39. Going on a little farther, he fell on his face praying. My father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He returned to the Talmud and found them sleeping. He said to Kepha, were you so weak? Were you so weak that you couldn't stay awake for me even an hour? Stay awake and pray that you will not be put to the test. The spirit indeed is eager, but human nature is weak. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Going out and jumping into things and not being totally prepared. You get eager to do something. Wow, let's, let's get this done. I can relate to that because many times I got all excited. Boom, took off. Boom, hit the wall. Okay, let's back up and think about this a minute. What did I just do wrong? You know, we got to get ready for what's ahead of us, okay? A second time he went off and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot pass away unless I drink it, let what you want be done. 
again, Yeshua, he could have taken the easy way out and walked away from this whole situation, okay, from what he was about to do. He could have, couldn't he? But he didn't. His, his love for the Father and his flock, his future bride, you know, he knew he had to fulfill his destiny. It was for our salvation. And that's what he knew he came for. That's why he, that's why his father sent him. And there, you know, it's, it all ties into a whole other study. He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That is Ephraim. He came for us. So we better be on our faces praising God and thanking him every day for that blessing in our life. He was, but he was preparing us himself spiritually in his heart to go through what he was about to come into okay we need to be preparing ourselves spiritually building our relationship with the father every day we need to give him the glory you know building our lives around righteousness holiness love integrity honesty all these things tie into that because so many depend on us to fulfill our destiny uh, for now and for what is to come yeah, how we do this now is going to is going to make a difference on the ones coming after us. Yeah, think about that. We talk about that many times. Not just for us. Don't be doing it just for yourself. Do it for your children, your grandchildren, those that are coming after us. They're going to depend on that. Just as we need to be preparing for the members of Ephraim, our, our brothers and sisters that are going to come into this set. Are coming in at a little bit later time. Yeah, we're the first fruits, so our destiny is was a little bit ahead of theirs as far as the start out. We're the first fruits. We have to learn this and get it right so it's it's clicking when they come in, so we can help them. There's times when we're in such a mess yet that we couldn't help anybody. God's given us time, but that time is short. It's clicking. It's ticking day after day after day. It's time to buckle down and get really serious about what's coming. We need to prepare it couple more sets of scriptures that show us how our ancestors prepared for what is about to happen. Let's go to Luke 24, 49, if you will. The disciples are going to be given something they must do by Yeshua, okay? He, he, he's going to direct them here a little bit. Luke 24, 49. Now I am sending forth upon you what the, my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been equipped with power from above. So he's pretty much saying, you need to stick around here. Don't be going off somewhere and, and moseying off, you know. And like I say, you know, you get, you get, you're sitting around waiting for things. It's, you know, it's like waiting for an event to happen, but it, it, you don't know when it's going to happen. And it starts dragging on, dragging on, dragging on, you know, for some other, whatever reasons it gets delayed. Pretty quick, you get weary and you start paying attention to the wrong things. And all of a sudden, there it is, just like the 10 virgins, you know, all of a sudden, whoop. We weren't paying attention, and it slipped right on by us. Yeah, Yeshua said he send uh, he would send the promise of his father, but they had to do something to receive that promise. Didn't they? Yeah, they had to stay there. They had to get prepared. In the meantime, we'll have to pray a little bit for guidance in this thing when it does come. <laughs> yeah, Acts two, if you will, one through four. Acts two. So. It's a different way of life when you begin to keep this everlasting covenant. And if we can get our hearts into this thing, and, and like, uh, like the scriptures say, we need to come out of the world. We need to come out of Egypt, if you will, just like the Hebrews had to come out of there. They, if they stayed there, they'd still be there, right? But when you come out, your life's going to change. Everything around you is going to change. It's just like this COVID-19, all these the lockdowns and the social distancing. Our lives are changing right before us. The thing that we have is Ephraim, as children of the Most High God, keeping this everlasting covenant. We have the Father's promise, and we know that. We need to study into it and understand the true depths of it all, what he gave us, so we can get through all of this. We need to be prepared spiritually. Acts 2, 1 through 4, if you found it. The festival of Shavuot arrived, and the believers all gathered together in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from the sky like a roar of a violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which separated and came to rest on each one of them. They were all filled with the Rokokodesh and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit 
enable them to speak. Okay, it happened. He sent to the promise. And as we all know that the Holy Spirit, the Rapakadish, was the promise of the Father. It was his spirit coming within us to lead us and guide us into all truth. Now our hearts have been set. We have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Rapakadish. We've got it. Now what are you going to do with it? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to manage what you have? Okay, but they were obedient, weren't they? They did what he asked. They were in the right place at the right time. And look what happened. They were the recipients of the Rokhakadish, as we are when we accept him into our heart. Yeshua as our Lord and Savior. We have salvation through what Yeshua did on the cross for us. What we talked about a little earlier, what he was preparing for. That was our eternal salvation. That's how important it was that he fulfilled that, okay? We were given authority over all things through his name now and have the power of, to enforce that authority with the Rokhakadish. Yeah, we had the weaponry. We just needed the authority, and now we have it. We have it all. You have power over darkness. You have power over Satan and all his people, all his demons, whatever you want to call them. Yeshua put him under our feet with this. We've just got to learn how to use it and have faith and trust that it does work. Because it does. When you start using it, you're going to find that out. You're going to, yeah, hey, this works. Let's keep it up. Don't grow weary. Because it'll go, it'll be like a drippy faucet as it just slows down and slows down and slows down pretty quick. You go into a dry spell and you start giving up. Well, here I thought that was going to work. And then, well, it will. Hang in there. You can see the importance of being obedient, preparing for these tasks now. A lot of these things again what would have happened if they they went into jerusalem and tarried a while and then but didn't stay focused on it and they decided to go out about some outlying cities to see what was going on because it got kind of boring just sitting around huh what would have happened if they did that well they wouldn't have wouldn't have been in the right place at the right time that's what we need to be thinking about in our lives are we going to be in the right place at the right time if you're keeping the word of god if you're trusting in him he will have you in the right place. That's the key, though, is your faith, your trust in him. They probably would have lost their focus on Yeshua and may not have come back together in one accord, with, which was probably, if not the biggest key. They had to be there in one accord. And that's where we have to come together. We have to get our hearts right. That's a whole big change in our life from the way we lived up there in North America and, and around the world today. Are we living with one heart? Are we living with a singular heart as we did up there? This is mine. You can't touch it. You're in my space. <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. But one of the biggest keys is the power of the Rokhakadish, like I said, being poured out upon them. And that launched them, didn't it? Yep, that. <laughs> as we can attest to today, it was a biggie. It was a biggie. We looked at examples in Scripture where someone had to prepare for the task by command of the of Yahweh, yeah. uh, Noah and Abraham, we went through that, and believe me, the tasks that they had to fulfill. Again, we uh, we may never be in the position that they were in. You know, we have to go build a big ark, or you have to put your firstborn on an altar and slay him. You know, but we're going to go through some things that are going to be a very big challenge in our life. You know, God won't give you more than you can handle. We need to understand that, but he's going to test you. So that's where we need to be prepared. By reason of something desired personally, uh, Jacob, he went out and he found Rebecca. Um, in preparation for the event that was to come, the ten virgins. You know, so there's different reasons. Waiting for the bridegroom to show up. You know, they, the group tearing to receive the promise of the Father. We look through all these different examples of things that people had to do. And we can place ourselves in these positions, you know, in our life as what we're gonna do. Yeshua, uh, in preparation of, in his heart, also going through what was gonna happen in his flesh. You know, being the son of God, he knew, he saw what was coming. Boy, that had to be one test, you know, because we don't always get to see what's coming. There's where faith kicks in. He did, but he had to fulfill, but he was in the flesh, yeah. He, he, he came close to going, but then he said, no, Father, your will be done. Amen. 
Praise God, he did that. There are so many ways to prepare for so many things. In our lives, we see things to prepare even daily, okay? And every day when you get up, you got to start getting ready for the day, doing different things. Some things aren't as important as others, but the key is to prepare the best you know how, you know? And uh, for anything that might come to you in that day, you know, when you're getting ready to go to work, you know, uh, or whatever you're, whatever you're going to do, you know, Shabbat, <laughs> get prepared to rest. <laughs> That's a good one, but we got to do these things, you know, and do them the best you can. Uh, you have to maintain an integrity and a diligence and give Yeshua, give Yahweh, give them something to work with in your life. Okay. So. Yahweh has given us everything we need to be successful in our lives. We have to learn how to manage it. You know, and that's something that came up my one time. Yeah, we've got everything we need. We have his word. You know, we have everything. How are we going to manage it? Are you going to squander it? Or are you going to prepare so that as each thing comes along, you know, you may do the best you can prepare. Sometimes it don't always work out. But the Lord's trying to teach you something in that fashion. So keep, keep diligent. Okay, Proverbs 27, 12, if you'll turn there with me, please. But like I said, he's given us all we need. And if you get ready for the days, you know, get, get up and think about what you're going to do, what's going to come, how we're going to get ready. You know, Proverbs 27, 12, if you found that. The clever see trouble coming and hide. The thoughtless go on and pay the penalty. Okay, so you can't interpret that word high to the fact that they prepared, didn't they? They prepared for the trouble. Okay, they did, uh, they did what they had to do to get ready for what was going to come. The, uh, if, if, you are, uh, if you are the wise if you are wise and paying attention to what's going on around you and what is coming, you will be prepared to protect you and yours when it does get there, you know. And that's... You can hide away in some place and, and uh, just kind of forget things, if you will, but you still, you know, you got to be careful because all of a sudden something comes upon you and you weren't ready for it. So the best thing is just Know what's going on around you out there. You know, we have ways now to know what's going on all across the face of this earth. We know it's getting pretty rough. So we need this, like I say, in this day and this hour, we need to truly be getting ready, you know, figuring out a way how we're going to make it through this thing. If, uh, but if, you, if you're if you like the majority of the world, or you're just cruising along, uh, you know, thinking that things are they're going to go on as usual. We're going into another cycle, and then we're going to come out of this cycle, and everything will be okay for a while again. Well, guess what? We're in the end times. We're in the last days, however you want to put that. Things aren't going to always get better. And when we get into that time, they're not. They're going to get worse and worse until the final, the final end, the final battle. Then we'll have a millennium of peace. And then it's still not all over. We're still going to have a need to fail. So even then, we're going to have to be prepared. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take precautions, you know, for about anything that you think might come along. Listen to people, study, you know. Uh, talk to some of the folks that have been around a while, that have been in situations like this. Some, that's where some of your elders will come into play. Your parents, if you will, uh, your grandparents, uh, friends that have been around, gone through different things, you know, seen some of the wars that went on, what the economies did coming out of those wars. Talk to them. They can help you. You know, they'll, they'll guide you. But don't get, don't get caught with, like they say, with your shorts down and not be ready for anything. Just cruising along. Yeah. As the proverb says, you will pay for that penalty. Or you will pay that penalty for, you know, the, the, the ones that weren't prepared. Yep, they didn't see. They, they paid the penalty. Yeah. They weren't ready. Okay. And that penalty could be your life for the lives of your family. Think about that. It's going to get real serious, folks. It's going to get real serious. One of the things you need to keep in mind as you begin to lay out your plan for preparation, okay? What are my needs versus what are my wants? That's a biggie. 
you hear people say, well, I want this, and I want that, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. Well, let's stop back up here just a minute and think about this. What do I need, first and foremost? What do I need, first and foremost? And once that can be fulfilled, and once you're in a place where your needs are being met, then you can start going, okay, now I want this. I would like to have this, you know. Then you can start looking at the things that you can add on that are just, it's nice to have. You know, and the Lord, if, if you're walking in his ways and you're keeping this covenant, he will bless you in many ways. Yeah. It doesn't hurt to have some blessings. You can have a good life. You can have a pleasant life, a happy life, a fruitful life. But you have to prepare for that, okay? We, uh, we got some things that, are going to be coming at us in this world today. I'm going to name off a few now and some things that we may want to think about. Like I say, this is just a guidance. You know, you need to look at your life and, and where your situation is, you know, who you are, where you live, you know, things like that. These are guidance. These are guidances, just things to make a note of. And I may miss a few. You may have some that I can use, you know, but that's what this is all about, helping each other, okay? Uh, we've got plagues that are coming, if you will, and we're kind of dealing with something in that fashion right now, this COVID-19, and it's been prophesied that, yeah, there's going to be one coming, but when that one's over with, there's going to be one behind it that's going to be even worse, and they're already talking about that. And the sad thing is they're not saying if that one comes, they're going, they're going to win. When it gets here, they know it's coming. Food shortages. We're already seeing that all over the face of this earth. What do you need to do in that situation? You need to figure out how to grow a garden, number one. No matter where you're at, you can figure out one way or another how to grow some food. Depending where you live, look around. Talk to the people. What's it take to grow this here? What's it take to grow that there? What's already growing there? The trees, the plants that are out there that you can already harvest the fruits and vegetables of it, that type of thing. And it's there. Economic collapse. And we've seen samples of that already in some of these times when the stock market crashes and this and that and whatever. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big one one of these days. And like I said, it ain't going to get better. You know? Government collapse. We can see in our governments now. You look around it. <laughs> there's going to be an election coming up in the States again and, and uh, around the world, different places. But at one time, there might have been a little integrity involved in some of that, but you look at it now, the Democrats versus the Republicans, and it's a battle. It is a big feud. They're, they don't even care about the people, it seems like, anymore. They're worried about themselves, their position, and the money they're making in doing this. It, it, it's so sad, you know. We need to do the best we can, and maybe, maybe the only thing we can do many times, we can do this always, is pray. Pray that the Lord will guide the ones with the good hearts and the right hearts, and that he will make a way to move the ones that are evil out of the way, because there are some evil ones in these governments. You look at the way they're dealing with people nowadays. Persecution. There's going to be persecution coming, as we mentioned a little earlier. Uh, if you're keeping this everlasting covenant, you're keeping the word. They're going to hate you because you know Yeshua. Yeah, they hated him. Why wouldn't they hate you? That's the way of the world, and it's going to happen, folks. Get your heart ready. Get your heart ready. It's going to get really tough even for those that have prepared. But if you're not prepared, it's even going to be much, much more worse. And like I said, it could mean your life, it could mean your family's life. This thing is going to get serious. One of the ways that we need to start our preparation for what is to come in these last days, number one, get right with Yahweh. Yeah, get in the book and find out what the book says that we need to do to keep his word. How he expects us to live, how he expects us to love him first and foremost, and how we need to love our neighbor. That's the tough one. Everybody can raise a hand on that, living in the world that we live in. But we need to make a way. We need to figure it out. We need to give up the flesh a little bit. We need to slap the flesh. Quit thinking about just ourselves. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's get ready. We need to get that line of communication established with the Father every day and getting the sin out of our life, you know. We wake up in the morning, Lord, forgive me for my sins. You know, I need to start this day out right. I need to seek your forgiveness so that my heart will be clean and I can start it again. You know, don't hurt to do that a couple times a day. You know, like Paul said, I sin daily. And I think we can all raise our hand to that one. All of this is not only in the Bible, but also in the materials that we've studied over the years. And uh, you know, we can find these things. They're, they're not hard, but if nothing else, get it, get it in the Bible. Get in that book and read it. Start out at the beginning. Find out what Torah was all about. Find out what the Lord gave Moses because that's his commandments. That's what we need to be living, okay? Things to think about for what is coming to the face of this earth. We need to prepare for, okay? Our relationship with the Father, first and foremost. Walking in holiness and righteousness. Are we doing that daily? Are we striving? Are we thinking about that when we get up and seek that forgiveness? Lord, guide me today. That when a situation arises that i got to be around somebody that I'm not real fond of, help me, Lord, to overcome that judgment, that resentment, to love them, to pray for them. And that works. I've had to go through some of that myself. I'll raise my hand on that one because I was that way in the world. I was judgmental. I wanted things to kind of go my way, and if it didn't, you know, somebody come along and they did it their way, right, wrong, or indifferent, it, what's the matter with that knucklehead, you know? Instead of saying, Lord, I hope they're successful, lift them up, Lord, bless them. If they're, if they're wrong, bless them and show them the right way. Just like he needs to show me the right way. Sort of, Lord, if I'm wrong, show me. Show me. I need to know. I can't do it without you. So... Do we, uh, do we walk in that holiness and righteousness? We have joy, peace in our life. Because if we don't, we're probably not walking in holiness and righteousness. Do we know how to pray so that the Father can, can and will hear us? Do we know how to pray? Again, like I said, first, get rid of the sin in your life. Ask forgiveness so that you can open that line up. Because he does not condone sin. He won't hear. Live according to Yahweh's word. Get in there. Learn the book. Study to show yourself approved. It's all there. there. All the examples are in there to show us, to guide us, direct us into the ways that he wants us to live. And look at the mistakes that they made and try not to make them again. Look at the things that happened well and praise God. And that's the other thing. Praise God regularly. Praise him when something really good happens Praise him and glorify him for that. If something bad happens or something goes negative in your, day, in your day, praise him anyway. Give him the glory because he's trying to show you something. He loves you. He wants you to do it right. Okay, Father, that didn't go so well. What did I do wrong? Show me my mistake. Show me what I need to change to please you, Father. The rest of what you do with what happens is pretty much <laughs> all wrapped up in that word preparation with that, with the Father, okay? And now we're going to talk about some physical things that we need to think about going into these days because we're already seeing shortages of food all over the world, and there's places in the world where water's a real issue. We've seen some of that down here on the island, and we went through a really dry spell, and uh, we still have some water, and we're getting some rain now, praise God. But we've been here in times when there wasn't water in places. The well I had on my the little house that we live in, it was, it was sucking air on low tide. Yeah, water. Do we have a water source? Do you have more than one, if, if, if need be? You know, if you got, uh, if you, you're living around a freshwater lake or something, get you, a, get you a filter of some kind, a Brita, a Berkey. There's all kinds of things out there so that you can filter your water and have good, clean drinking water. Get it ready. A filtration system, like I just said, storage. You have a place to store your water. You know, even if it's a little bit for a while to keep you going until you can figure out something else when the things are kind of turning sideways on you. Okay? Water. Water, it's important. You can live without food for a long time, but you can't go too long without water, okay? Pay attention. 
food. Learn how to grow food prior to the need for it. <laughs> Get ready, prepare. Start growing, start playing around with different things while you have time so that when the time comes and you need it, you have it. Okay? Don't wait till all of a sudden, oh, we can't buy seeds. They just closed all that up because there's places already where they quit selling seeds and stuff because it was essential. I mean, the stuff you're hearing, now you just shake your head. But there's so many ways, you know, to do that. Um, food storage, how, how can you store it when you, when you get your food? And you start harvesting it in. How am I going to store this? How, how am I going to put it away so it does last a while? There's so many ways to do that. You know, dry goods, you can seal them up in, in mylar or different ways. Um, if, it, if it's put in a canning jar, you know, it's, it's vegetables and stuff that you want to put in a canning jar and seal them up. You know, they, they last years. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and how much is enough? And that's what you need to look at with your family. You know, how many people are in your family? How much food do you usually go through in a week's time, in a month's time? How much do you really need to live on? How much food do you, and then think about ways where, you know, when it gets tough, you're gonna have to ration it out just a little bit. Uh-oh, chance to fast, huh? <laughs> Fuel, there's another one. Fuel for what? Fuel for cooking? Do you have a way to cook? Do you have wood? Do you have propane? Do you have uh, oil? You know, uh, camping oil at first, camping stoves. What what kind of, what do you have to create a fire, you know, to burn, to cook your food with, you know? And also for heating, depending where you live on the face of this earth. There's places in this, on the face of this earth where you better have a way to stay warm. <laughs> yeah, not only the heat, you know, if you're up in the northern countries and stuff, and you know, there's lots of wood in places that you can burn, but do you have blankets? Do you have clothes and stuff? Look into your storage closets and whatnot. What do you have available that you may need? Do you have something to light the fire with? Yeah. Do you have something to light the fire with? These are things to look at. Don't wait till the last minute. Tools, what kind of tools might I need for repairing things? You know, I'm going to be out here living and I'm going to have a garden. I'm going to be doing this, 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 and this, and I've got to do some carpentry work. Uh, you know, what kind of tools do I have to repair? Because as things wear out or as they break, you got to repair them. Uh, mechanical needs, you know, fixing a pump, fixing a car, fixing a wheelbarrow, anything. Gardening, do you have the tools for gardening? Don't take a lot. But it helps to have a good hole and a good sho uh, shovel maybe and a few things like that, something to cut weeds with. Do we have the right tools for the things that might be coming, okay? Housing, do you have a safe housing? Do you have a place to live? Do you have a place for your family to live with you? Uh, a place to keep them safe where you have a little bit of space and it's gonna stay warm? The wiring on all freight, you're going to burn the house down, you know, because that happens pretty regularly. Yet, you know, you, and this takes time. You got to maintain these things. Get a go look around your house a little bit. You know, check the wiring out. I did that one time in the house we bought. It was an older home and everything seemed to work well, but I just got to looking around. I need to replace some of this stuff. There's some bare wires there. Yeah. Are you in a safe location? You know, where are you at when things really go sideways? Are you going to be right in downtown, one of the big old cities, you know, where when things go sideways and the rioting starts and the food, the stores get ransacked and you're out of food, are you going to be able to get out of there and find a safe place for you and your family? Where do you live? What's the location? Yes, yeah, some people have to live there now. You know, that's their jobs. Some people choose to live there. So what are you going to do when this happens? Are you going to have a place to go? Are you going to be able to get away from that? Okay. Things to think about is it's going to happen. Sanitation. You have your bodily functions. Everybody's alive and well. And, you, know. <laughs> you have, are, are you going to be able to take care of that business, you know, in a sanitary fashion? The storage and disposal of it, you know, cleaning your body. Are you going to be able to wash yourself so you can, you can stay healthy 
You know, you can't just let yourself get all run down and dirty and, you know, figure out some kind of a source of, of, of water to clean, you know, enough water to clean once in a while anyway. You don't have to be every day, but think about that part of it, cleaning your body, keeping yourself clean and healthy. General cleaning, cleaning your house where you live, keeping it tidy, keeping it safe, you know, so you don't get uh, the condition of the house get run down to where it's, it's not safe to be in or pestilence, you know, there's gonna be pestilence around, you know, keep it safe. Cleaning supplies, what kind of supplies do I need to have handy, you know, vinegar and water makes a great cleaner. Talk to the ladies, they'll help you out with these things. You know, there's many other ways. It's real simple and very inexpensive uh, for making soaps and stuff, for laundry, for shampoos, for for showers or whatever. You know, there's there's many many ways to do these things that are pretty inexpensive, and you can make quite a bit for very little money. Instead of just going to the store and buying a big box of Tide and a whole bunch of ivory soap, I'm just naming some things I know right now. I'm not putting them down in any way, shape, or form. They're probably all as good a product as the next, but that stuff isn't going to be available one day, okay? Communications. Do we have a way to communicate if need be? You know, walkie-talkies, telephones, computers, and there's going to be a time when they don't all work either. So um, just things to think about when you do have the power, when you do have the means for it, you know, and to conserve, you know, the batteries and stuff, have the batteries on hand to run the, the remote devices and things like that. And then, be prepared to shut them off once in a while so you don't run the battery down and it's available when you might need it, okay? Just different things like that. Are, you know, that's just a quick rundown of some of the things that we need to think about, we need to be preparing with and for, okay? It, it sounds like a lot wrapped up into this teaching and everything, but it's really not. And it doesn't, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take you a little time, but you need to start. You need to sit down, see where you live, see what your conditions are, what your situations might be, where you are living, and then start writing notes. Start writing lists of things that you might need. Getting ready, okay? Things that you might need that you don't have. And maybe some of the things you already have, you just never thought about. Fine, go through your storage, go through your shops or your closets and stuff. See what's there that's been <laughs> getting dusty. Oh, this will work. Hey, it's in not too bad a shape. And if something you use a lot, you have a backup for it. Things to think about. These are just a few things I listed to help understand that preparing for what is going to come to this face of this earth, you know, because believe me, it's serious and it's a serious thing we need to plan for. And it is going to happen. We're going to all go through some things here. Brothers and sisters, we're going to, we're going to have to give it our very best total commitment to get through what's coming on the face of this earth. Now, <laughs> something I thought about one time, and I was like, well, I'm doing the best I can, and then I stop for a minute, I think, am I really doing the best I can? How can I do better? So, doing the best you can can always be done a little better if you stop and think about it. And it may not take much, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is, but stay on top of it, just keep working at it. Keep working at it, stay diligent, okay? What we're gonna go through right now, what we are going through with this COVID-19 is just an eye opener. If this doesn't spark folks into wanting to prepare, if it doesn't shake their tree just a little bit to look at what's going on around and what could happen, then something's wrong, you're not paying attention because they already have food shortages over this thing because of so many different things they're doing, they're dumping foods, they're they're, they're euthanizing animals because they shut down processing plants. And I mean, it's a, it's a, you don't hear about all of it, but it's happening. There's ways to find this stuff out, be out there searching. But first and foremost, understand, you're gonna have to put yourself in a position where you can, you can provide for yourself for a while because those things are not gonna be providing for you when that thing shuts down. You're going to have to be prepared spiritually again, like we talked about. And that's the one that probably we can start on right off the bat and work out very diligently. Because if you're not prepared spiritually, you're <laughs> you're going to be in trouble anyway. Okay, you'll have to shore up and store up through the Word 
of the Father and get prepared emotionally for what we're about to go through. We're going to talk about faith just a little bit. Where's your faith level in this thing? Because that's what it's going to take. Do you trust him? Your faith level is going to have to be at its highest point. And you'll have to be fully prepared to stand on your faith. Because there will be persecution. And there are also going to be times when, oh, I didn't see that one coming. Because there will be things that happen that you didn't quite get all prepared for. It's just the way it is. The Lord's going to test you in many ways. Be okay, though. It'll be okay if you trust him. He will provide. Okay? Be ready to stand on it, possibly even on, <laughs> to the face of death. Standing on your faith. Trusting in the Father. You know, think about it. He created it all. You know, he said, let there be light in everything you see today. Everything. Everything comes through his hands. Nothing happens without him taking care of it and allowing it to come forward. Okay? So why would he not be able to take care of you? Here's so many people, I don't believe in him anymore. He didn't help me through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all probably gone through that again. You know, we can all raise our hand at one point in time. But look around you. What's he trying to teach you? That's the key. He's trying to get you ready for what's coming. You're going to have to be prepared physically for what is coming. You know, keep yourself in good shape. Have, you know, a, a good diet, you know, things like that. So that you, you can be healthy in the times when they, you will, your body will have to go through some things. Through some things so get it ready. No matter what spot on the face of this earth that you occupy, you will have to use what resources are available. And you'll have to use your imagination just a little bit to make it all work out. And that's what we call about getting ready ahead of time so you know what might work and what probably won't work. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to be prepared to do what some folks like to talk about. And that's get to be a little bit of a redneck in you. <laughs> I know it's, it's some people just hate that term, but you know, there, there's some truth to it. If uh, growing up on a farm, it, it kind of helped me understand it a little bit because we was out there on the farm. We don't always have the right tool or the right material. So we took what we had to make it work for the rest of the day or till we had time to go to uh, go to town and get the right parts or whatever, you know? And, uh, we can all do that. We can all do that. You have the skills. You just need to hone them a little bit. Figure out what you're good at, what you're not so good at. Find the folks that are good at what you're not so good at. Talk to them. Get some advice. Let them help you. Are you prepared to live off the land with whatever the Father has placed there for you? Look around outside where you live. What's out there that I could live on? Boom, all of a sudden there was no food in the stores. And I didn't have my garden up yet. It was planted, but it wasn't growing. What can I live on? You, are you by a body of water where you can fish? You have fruit trees. There's plants out there, all kinds of wild plants that you can eat. Yeah. We don't always have those supermarkets and the stuff worlds, if you will, stuff marts. <laughs> They're not going to be there one day. Yeah, you're going to have to fend for yourself just a bit. Like I said, with this COVID-19 situation we're in, the Father's, he's giving us a pretty good hint of what's coming. And this ought to be a real eye-opener for us to really get started into this planning thing and start to understand we're going to have to do this. He's given us that little bit more time that we might need because after the next one, we might be out of time. You might be thrust into a situation where it's not going to be available to get prepared for, okay? These dire straight situations we have about, we read about in the Word, are starting to slowly develop on the face of this earth right before our eyes. You know, the last days, the, the time of trouble, the tribulation periods and things like that, they're starting, they're starting, get ready. We just need to be prepared and know what to look for. That's why being prepared in the Word is going to help you there because you're going to see it coming. Ah, I read about that in the book. That, they, they wrote it back then, but it's happening here and now. That's what they were talking about. There are sources of information for you uh, that you can look into to help these things. You can go on the internet. They go to libraries, uh, survival things, you know, simple things. Uh, <laughs> things kind of cool is 
you know, like I say, in most areas, you do have some wood available out there, trees that are dead or you can get to them, you know. There's a few places on the earth where there aren't any trees, which <laughs> are very few. But if you have it, you can take a, a couple of cement blocks and you can make a rocket stove out of it. You can find that on the internet. And it's a very simple thing and it's easy to make and you can cook things on it. We did it, we tried it, and it works. <laughs> yeah, we got wood source, we got, uh, we got uh, propane to burn, we got electrical as long as we have electricity. So, you know, get yourself, make sure you got a couple different modes to do these things. It's all out there, just you gotta look for it once in a while, but there's lots of things you, you know, that you can learn from, okay? We all need to help at times in our life. We all need help also at times in our life. Don't be afraid to ask. Humble yourself a little bit. Humble yourself a little bit. You know, not everyone is up to speed in the knowledge it takes to get this all done. Remember, Yahweh has given us everything we need to be prepared to the best of our ability. The best of our ability. Like I said, don't be bad, feel bad. Some people are good at one thing and not at another. This is where we're going to have to learn to live as family, bartering helping each other, not only in trading food and stuff, trading help, okay? How are you gonna manage these resources? It's totally up to you. Mark 16, 15, if you will. We're gonna, a couple more scriptures here, we're gonna close her up. Mark 16, 15. Then he said to them, as you go throughout the world proclaiming the good news to all creation, whoever trusts and is immersed will be saved. Whoever does not trust will be contempt. Condemn, excuse me. Trust. Whoever trusts, that's key. Where's your faith level? How you choose to live and how you choose to speak may be the only Bible somebody will ever have read before. Yeah, there's people out there that don't go to church, that they were brought up that way or whatever. How are you presenting yourself as a Christian, as, as a covenant keeper? But I understand this, what you see and what you... What what they see and what they hear from you may lead them to Yeshua in the right way. Okay, that's how a lot of this is going to work, folks. We're going to be ministering by just the way we act. Ecclesiastes one nine, Ecclesiastes one nine. Things to reflect on. Things to reflect on. What has been is what will be. What has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. So when we talk about going through the scriptures and, and reading about the examples of what they did back then and what they went through and stuff, we're, everything parallels. You can see that in the scriptures, plus what's going on today. Everything follows parallels. What has been done will be done again. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing's new. Okay, so learn, learn from these things. You know, we're going to go through things that they went through. It might be a little different situation, different place on the face of the earth, but it's going to be the same type of temptation, if you will. From this, we know that we have examples, okay, to live on. Let's learn from them. Quit making those mistakes. Ecclesiastes 9, 4. We're going to read 9, 4 through 9, 6. Things to reflect on. How are you going to live your life? How do you present yourself? Are you walking in holiness and integrity? Are you just being a schmuck? Okay. For as long as a person is linked, linked with the living, there is hope. Better to be li a living dog than a dead lion. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. There is no longer any reward for them because all memory of them is lost. They've already been through what they're going to go through. They're out of here. They don't have to feel the pain anymore. But it's over with. And they will be forgotten. What they loved, what they hated, and what they envied all disappear, disappeared long ago. And they no longer have a share in anything done under the sun. We're all going to go there, folks. What's your eternity going to be like? How are you going to live your life? Nothing new under the sun. I, these things are just things to reflect on. 
So we'll, we will be forgotten by the living one day, and that's okay. That's okay. Because if you lived it right, if you did it, if you did everything like you were supposed to, in favor, you know, found favor with the Father, and it's going to be okay. One day we're going to live eternal glory, okay? But we can make a difference while we are here for those coming after us. So what you do with your life today, you can make a difference, okay? Let's make, let's make it a positive difference for those that are coming behind us. Remember that part of it. Don't just do it for yourself. And don't feel bad because, oh, one day they'll forget me. You know, people get hung up on the past. You know, and then Yeshua say, I can't use it. If you, if you got your hand on, if you're on the plow with both hands, and you pull your hand off, turn around, look behind, I can't use you. But look ahead. What's back there is done. You can't change it. You can't change it. Make a difference on what you can change, okay? It's all part of preparation. Okay, I think that's, uh, you know, shut her down there. Plenty to think about. Let's stand up and praise the Lord and thank him. Give him the glory. Father, we thank your name and we praise you and glorify you for your mercy for this word. And I pray that it will have blessed those out there listening in one way or another to help them and guide them to look into your word, to find the ways that you can help them in every way, because you can. He's the only one that can. But guide them and direct them in their hearts so they can take this out and begin to live their life for you and to give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise you and glorify you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.